Hello and welcome to another home lab experiment. Today we are out in the fields, as you can see, because we need to get potatoes. As in potatoes, there is an explosive material, which I'm gonna show you. But before we get to that, we need potatoes. Okay, this explosive material is actually a metal, which is uh, in potatoes in the order of half a percent. So that means that every time you have 100 grams of potatoes, you're gonna have half a gram of this material, and the material is potassium. And uh, potassium is a metal from the first group in the periodic system, right under sodium, and it shares some of the same properties as sodium, which means it explodes in contact with water. So now why do we have potassium in our food, do you ask yourself, when it might explode? And the thing is, it does not explode when it's in a compound, it means it's bonded together with other atoms to make salts. And what our body uses it for is potassium is in our cell. For instance, it is used to transmit signals through nerves, very important for our body, and also explosives. So that's what I'm going to show you. And there we got the potatoes. Potatoes straight from the dirt of Denmark. We're gonna bring these home, slide them up, dry them, burn them, and uh, extract the actual potassium salts from it. And then we'll go from there. kilograms of potatoes <laughs> reduced to that <laughs> So how much potassium is actually in this ash? This we can figure out by measuring on it. So let's do that. Here we are measuring the background radiation. The measurement is going on at the moment. This is where we are measuring it. It goes over to this, to this, down into this, and up here. Now, why do we measure the background radiation? You might ask yourself. Luckily, I have a good friend who's a physicist, and I'll let Pilla explain that for you. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm going to say something about how we can use measurements of radioactivity to say something about how much potassium is in our potato ash. So in the electroweak interaction, the Higgs mechanism for asymmetry, which results in a Lagrangian term for the interaction between gauge bosons and fermions, as we see here. 
Right, so I was told that maybe I should go about explaining this in a different way somehow. So what we want to do is that we want to find out how much potassium is there in our potato ash. We're going to do that by comparing the potato ash to potash, because we know exactly how much potassium is in potash. Now, potassium is an element, just like hydrogen, oxygen or iron, which means that we have potassium atoms, and there are different kinds of potassium atoms. The most common one is potassium 39, and another kind of potassium atom is potassium 40, which is just 0.012% of all potassium atoms. The interesting thing about potassium 40 is that it's radioactive, meaning that it changes into different kinds of atoms while emitting radiation. This kind of radiation is something that we can measure. And so by measuring the amount of radiation, we know how much potassium is in our sample. So we measure how much radiation is coming from our potash, compare it to how much radiation is coming from our potato ash, and taking into account the natural background radiation. And by doing some calculations, we can then find out how much potassium is actually in our potato ash. So as Pilla just explained, in order to be able to figure out how much potassium we actually have in the potato ash, first you gotta take the very pure potassium carbonate, which is the actual compound that is in the potato ash. And I got this. In Denmark we used them to bake with, especially these uh, small kind of cookies for Christmas. And what we can do is we'll put this in this jar and we'll start measuring with the Geiger counter to figure out how much radioactivity do we get from pure potassium carbonate. So let's get that going. <coughs> there we go. After this, we can start measuring the potato ash and then eventually figure out how much potassium should be in the potato ash. Well, I'll start the measurement from here. This is the ashes we got from burning the potatoes. Let's see how much ash we get out of 14 kilograms of potatoes, because that's actually quite exciting. Let me get my weight uh, which is up here. Here we go. Let's put the potato ash on. 139 grams. Now we just gotta figure out what this bag weighs. Six grams. So that means we got 133 grams of potato ash. We're finally done with the measuring of the potassium carbonate and we are now ready to measure the actual potato ash. Well, since we don't need it anymore, we're gonna throw it out. Last thing, press begin measurement. And waiting for data. So, 18 hours later, and the measurement is done. All we see here on the screen here is radioactive decay from the potassium 40, as Pedro told you about. Uh, so this is the decay here, and this is count, so it's just counting basically. Uh, all that's left out to do is do the data analysis, the calculations, all the physics and all that stuff. Uh, I will spare that. Uh, I will spare that for you. Uh, spare you that right now. If you're interested in actually seeing the data analysis results when we do the statistical analysis on this, if you want to see a more detailed description on how do we do this, well, all these things are going to be on our webpage, which are, well, link in the description down here. If there's by pure chance anything that you would like to know that we do not cover there or we do not cover in our videos, please don't hesitate to write a comment in the comment section down here. Uh, I read pretty much everything and uh, I will reply to everything I can and in any way I can. Um, if there's anything else, well, please share it with us. I mean, I just find potassium fascinating because I have never played it with it before and right now we're doing it from the potatoes and that's just a cool idea, well, basically I got, but nobody says that that's everything. I mean, now we're trying to figure out how much potassium there's in a sample of potato ash by measuring radioactivity from that potassium, which, well, I love it. <laughs> and if you by any chance happen to uh, do these experiments yourself, if you do them parts of it, if you build something of these things, uh, if you do that, 
please share that video. I would love to see that. Anyway, for now, all that's left to do is do the calculations, do the den analysis, as I said. When I have the results, I'll come back to you and exactly how much potassium we have in that bag of potato ash from those 14 kilograms of potatoes. And that means we should also be able to pretty much figure out whether that half percent makes sense or not. And we will also be able to figure out, well, um, how much can we theoretically get out of it in the end. So that's going to be very exciting. I'm going to return to you as soon as I know how much potassium I have. The cameraman on us just fell. <laughs> Same guys, this is just as radioactive as potash. That means within uh, how accurate we are able to measure, we are actually not able to tell whether or not they are different. My potato ash must mainly consist of potash. That's just <laughs> incredible. I mean. Wow, potash, or uh, apparently also this potato ash, uh, consists of something called uh, potassium carbonate. Potassium carbonate has the chemical formula K2CO3. There are two potassium atoms, and there's one carbon and three oxygen atoms in the molecule. The potassium atoms, they weigh a bit more, 56% actually, of the whole uh, weight. That means if you have pure potash, about 56% of that is actually potassium atoms. If half of this is potassium, and this weighs 133 grams, that means that about half a percent in total of the weight of the potatoes, 14 kilograms, half a percent should be potassium according to the measurements, and that fits more or less perfectly with what I can find on the internet in regards to how much potassium is in uh, potatoes. We're never gonna get it all out, but we are gonna get potassium out of this. And there's a lot of it in there. So, this is it for now in this video, guys. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna start the chemistry and start pulling out the potassium of this. Uh, there's a few preparations, then there's the chemistry, and depending on how much potassium we're gonna get out, we're gonna get a bigger uh, explosion. So the more potassium, the bigger the explosion in the end, which is gonna be awesome. I can't wait for that. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to see this video for the next time so you get the notification, then click the bell button. Uh, and then you will be notified when I extract the potassium from this and when we explode it, which is gonna all happen in the next video. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.